hey, this is resources for the modern creative. We have a channel here. It's dedicated to your progress. Now, for a very long time, we've been wanting to give you this amazing content, which we're about to provide to you. We're going to go over the entire Logic 10.6 manual. Now, if you have 10.5 or 10.4, this is all pertinent info simply because it all is just inherited. You might get some new bells and whistles, but generally speaking, it's all the same info. Now, who am I? Who is presenting this information? My name is Eddie Gray. I've done a lot by way of the music industry, TV composer. I've created the Apple curriculum for Logic Pro for a company called LearnQuest, who's an Apple training provider. I've done a lot by way of helping individuals learn this program. Now, we thought to ourselves, met up with my team, and we thought, what is, what's, what's the best thing that we can do for people out there right now? We know a lot of people are home. We know that they're in the situation that they're in. Why not help take them to the next level? What can we do effectively? Like, what, what do we have available to us? Well, we know the program in and out. We have what we believe to be as the best system in the game today. And rather than just go through the manual top to bottom, the way I'm going to conduct this is I'm going to show you the framework, how it works and why it works the way it does. So that when you're working on the program, you understand it front to back, top to bottom. I want you to feel empowered. And so I want you to become a Logic Pro user. So with that being said, if you have questions, I'll do my best to check the chat but this is predominantly meant for individuals that want to learn Logic Pro. They're tired of having gaps in their understanding and they finally want to master the program. And so this is what we're offering. Resources for the Modern Creative is the channel. Go ahead and sub. If you know anybody that will benefit from this information, we ask you to share so we can empower others, we can help them build as well. And other than that, guys, we just appreciate the love and the support. If you have any questions whatsoever, all you got to do is email support at hfmusicacademy.com. It's time that we get down to business. So let's get into it here. We're going to learn Logic Pro live on YouTube. Here we go. All right. So look, I'm going to share my screen and share the manual. And here it is from the very top, getting started with Logic Pro. The very first thing I want to show you guys is how to clean up your launch pad icon in the dock. So let me show you what I mean. If I go to the bottom of the screen here, you can see that I have all these various apps. And sometimes they're just popping out by default. And so what I want you to do is if you focus on the bottom right, let me just make sure you guys can see this. No, you can't. Okay, good. Let me let me bring you in here. Hold on. All right, cool. I'll show you my desktop, rather. Let's go to Logic. All right, you should be here now. And here at the bottom, okay, I want you to control-click the dock right here on the right-hand side, and I want you to turn hiding on. So what that's going to do is going to give you a little bit more screen real estate if you're just using a 15 inch or a 13 inch laptop so this is a little feature here just to give you a little bit more screen real estate all right let's keep it going go back to the manual now i understand that each and every one of you could read it yourself but again the idea is to go over it with somebody that's been in the game getting his reps in and really working on the program so from the very top getting started with logic pro all right so this is the main window called the tracks area sometimes referred to as the arrangement window, or you can access all of the major working areas of Logic Pro. That being the control bar, which is at the very top of the screen. All right, so if we're going to refer to this area, we're going to refer to it as the control bar. Here we have all your transport playback features, recording features, various modes and functions, which we can get into over time. The left-hand side has something called the inspector, which is super important when it comes to understanding the tracks that are currently in focus. Just be aware, left-hand side, got the inspector, and there are various inspectors within Logic. We'll go over them in a bit here. All right, we've got smart controls at the very bottom, key command B. These are very useful when you're trying to get to the most used 
the most often used parameters within logic. So you're not trying to waste your time with all the details. You just kind of need the, you know, the quick stuff, like what's going to get you there the quickest. So key command B gets you to smart controls. So the central part of the main window, again, called the tracks area. This is where we record, we arrange the musical material in your project. What kind of tracks do we have available to us? Well, we have audio, number one. We have software instruments, number two. And then we have drummer tracks, number three. Now, when you make a recording or you add a pre-recorded Apple loop or a third-party loop, it appears as a rectangular region, and these are referred to regions here at the top. Okay, the one that's colored green and bright green and pink in the bottom left. All right, so we've got the control bar again, which I mentioned. Lots of features, uh, including the project volume, which is this slider, which you can find up here. Um, it looks like they don't have it on the screen, but by default, when you turn on your screen, it should be there. I recommend you turn that off, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But um, in the middle of the screen, you have the LCD screen. This is going to give you information like bars, beats, tempo, the key, things of that nature. So this is something that you need to be well aware of. All right, start working with audio tracks. Um, you can open up the dialog window. And how do you do that? Well, let me bring you into Logic to look at it. So again, this may be... 101 for a lot of you but look i guarantee you, if we go over this long enough even the the individuals that are seasoned have been doing this for you know 10 plus years i guarantee you, you'll get some valuable information so if we're looking to open up the tracks dialog window option command n brings me there okay now we're looking at this window there's a lot of valuable information here for example are we going to use a software instrument right midi are we going to use audio in other words am i going to record it in myself or am i going to use a pre-configured or pre-recorded loop am i going to use the new or relatively new drummer technology which is available to us in two different formats electronic new school hip-hop things like that and then kind of acoustic uh singer songwriter rock right the organic drum kit sound um and so you can select that there then we have external midi this is a bit more advanced we're not going to go over this right now if you're a beginner, do not look at this, do not touch this. And then finally, guitar or bass. So if you're somebody that actually plays an instrument, guitar or bass, this is a, a nice menu. But really, it's redundant. All it's doing is it's just giving you an audio track with some presets, right? What do I mean by presets or, or patches? Basically, channel strips or tracks that have already been loaded with instruments and buses and things like that. So for now... For me, the way I like to think about it is really there's only three formats, software instrument track, an audio track, and a drummer track for now. Okay, so I'm going to select audio. Good. All right, let's uh, take it back here. All right, let's see. Let me get you guys here. All right, so we should be looking at the manual. Just want to make sure. So again, at the very top, we've got the control bar. It wasn't until I started to really pay attention to the program and every single icon, started learning all the various key commands that I started just experiencing a, a level of mastery that I always dreamed of. So sometimes it does take this, this level of like rigor and, and uh, education, like stopping and, and taking a moment to really learn something. Not just dabble, not just like one foot, but two feet in all the way committed, right? And so that's what I want for you guys. You can open the following working areas by hitting various key commands. The library, key command Y. This is where we can audition patches, okay? And again, we explain what patches were, right? A patch contains the instrument, the effects, any and all routing to control the sound of a track. Now, there's a distinction to be made between a patch and a channel strip setting or a CST. And again, we'll get into that later. The library is going to show you various patches and just instruments in general as well. You can choose a category on the left. So that's here, key command Y. Um, so again, it says in addition to patches, you can view and select plugin presets and other settings in the library. So not only can you select instruments, but let's say you have an audio track selected. And I hit the key command Y. Now I can look at all the various presets inside of that menu. So. 
let me bring you the logic so I show you what I mean. Uh, this should work a little bit better now. All right, so we should be inside a logic. And again, uh, the way that most people think about it is I'm using a MIDI track. Let's say I'm using Alchemy or what have you. Um, and then if I hit the key command Y, now I'm able to look at some of the user presets here that I've created. But if I go into factory, these are all the presets that are in effect inside of Alchemy here. So this is just like another window, another way to look at this, an alternate window. But we're using audio. Again, let's say we have some drums or something. Well, now I can select presets that have been pre-configured and pre-made. So let's just throw in a quick uh, loop from the loop browser. Let's pretend we're doing something in the world of rock. Command U creates a cycle region. And then I'm here on the left-hand side. And I, I don't want user patches because I created those. Same with CST or user channel strip settings. Let's go to drums and percussion. Maybe you don't have a lot of experience. You don't know a lot about mixing and mastering. They've done a lot of the work for you. Trust me. So then let's go to overheads and then we'll use pop overheads and we'll, we'll look at the chain and we'll see what does this have to offer us? Well, it's got an EQ, two compressors, which is very interesting. They're slamming the daylights out of the signal probably. Um, and so now let's hear this back. So this is before the preset, which is pop overhead. And if I add everything in, let's see what we got. So not big by way of difference, but at least it's a starting point to get a bump in your production. And what do I mean by a bump in your production? Just, just getting it to sound a little bit better. All right. And then you'll see also that they have these, these bus, uh, these buses available as well. So they've also made decisions for you in terms of what effects are they using, right? Here in this case, bus 130, they're using a reverb and then 131 is a different reverb. How do I know? Well, when I zoom in here, when I click on the top of the bus, it says 0 0.2 seconds. As far as the decay, when I click on bus 131, it says 0 0.4 seconds. Okay, good. Let's bring you back here. So now you know a little bit more about the library. Let's talk about the inspector, key command I. You can view and edit parameters for the selected region, both audio, both MIDI. The available inspectors and parameters change depending on which working areas have focus. So let's say I have a MIDI track working for me here. If I click on this track right now, you can see that it is highlighted, right? You look at the, the region itself and I'm going to click the background of the workspace. It's not highlighted. When I click it, it's in focus. This means that now the inspector is looking at it. It's like a direct view and it's giving you inside information on what this track has to offer and some of the ways that you can manipulate it. All right. Well, if I go up here, this is an audio track, right? Different parameters, different possibilities. And so you need to know both of these if you're really going to experience mastery in Logic Pro. This is a lot of the information we teach over at hfmusicacademy.com. So if you need a place to really study, really work, really take yourself to the next level, it's going to take concerted effort, right? You're going to have to move forward with, with conviction and with intention. And so this is somewhere you can go. So audio, MIDI, got the region inspector, which deals with every individual region. What do I mean? Well, right now, this is just one audio region. But if I chop it up or I drag in more loops or whatever the case may be, I've now turned this into four separate regions. And this is highlighted up here under region, four regions selected. If I wanted to change the names of these regions for whatever reason, I can double click up here in the region inspector and I can just test that out. Now you can see that every region has a new name. This may be important if you're like collaborating, you wanna show somebody a song, teach them the chord progressions, that would be useful in that capacity. So then now I've got four individual regions and we can have different parameters for every individual region. Now, if you have any questions for me, again, hit me up on the chat. I'm happy to help where I can. This is going to be a long process where we're going to really get into this program 
maybe you've been wanting to learn it forever and, and you keep saying, I'm going to take the time. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to spend, I'm going to invest. You don't have to invest here. We're going to do this because we love creative people all over the world. And we know this is a time of need and this is how we're going to contribute in effect. So if we've got four regions, right? So then now I want to change that into one region. How do I do that? Command J puts it all together for me and allows me now to manipulate and change things like the gain, the amplitude, right? I can actually change the notes themselves by way of transposing. I can turn this into a loop, which would extend it all the way out to the project end. If need be, we're not going to do that. Key command L will disable that. I can mute this in effect. Same thing with control M. There's more options here that you need to know. Super important. Okay, so go ahead and poke around in there. Then we have the track inspector, which deals with the track as a whole. So right now, write this down. You want to make sure you, you, you can distinguish between regions themselves and then the track itself. Same goes for MIDI. All right, so you can have individual MIDI regions and you can have one track or several regions in that track. So let's keep it moving. If I have a MIDI track selected, the information is going to be different than if I have an audio region selected. There's a quick help area, which I recommend all my beginners turn on. Really, really useful. You can turn that on right up here. There's a question mark up here. Key command shift forward slash will turn it on. And so then every single time I hover my mouse, it's I will get more information. Um, so like, for example, if you guys are looking up here top left, if I hover over this audio region, you get more information, right? An editable object representing recorded, et cetera. Excuse me. Good. Um, and by the way, if you're into this kind of thing or you want a quick help menu, the Logic Remote app, which I'm sure we'll be going over extensively, gives you so much more information. So if you're really looking to learn this kind of all the way, I would use your iPhone, iPad, and download Logic Remote. It's a free iOS app, and that's going to help you out a lot. All right, cool. Let's keep going here. So again, smart controls. Key command B, like Bob, lets you quickly adjust the sound of the selected track using a set of on-screen controls. When you open Smart Controls pane, you see the screen controls for the selected track. So right now I have Alchemy, track number three. If I hit B, I'm sorry, that's not Alchemy. That's a, a drum kit that I dragged in. So if I hit B, now we're looking at these various parameters. Where did this come from? Where did these parameters come from if I didn't bring them in myself. Well, since we're using a compressor and an EQ inside of this specific patch here, I'll drag it in again so you understand what I mean. I'm going to drag in bedroom or rather bedrock drum set. Okay. And then key command B shows me smart controls. And again, because I have a compressor in this specific patch or channel strip setting, now the settings, the most often used settings inside of the plugins that I'm currently using are highlighted in this feature. Let's say you also wanted a better view of the EQ. Well, we know we have this one up here, right? But if you just want instant access, if I go over to this menu, it's also right here. So this is a nice way of being able to control your plugins simultaneously and also the EQ. So let's pretend that I have a couple of other plugs in here and I'll, I'll, I'll keep it... Uh, stock to logic so let's look at like for example overdrive uh i have that under distortion and then here distortion too fantastic all right so again key command b go into controls i don't see anything else that's because this wasn't configured and and effectively written that way right so these are the smart controls available for this patch let's bring in another patch let's do um jazzy rock drums now this okay so this is kind of a similar situation you got a compressor the controls or parameters on the right via threshold ratio attack left hand side we have cut off and release so that's good if i drag in an audio track like i did up here and if i hit b what are these parameters well you can see i've got a an eq and two compressors and so that's what we're looking at here this is something that we will also be doing over time where you will actually create your own smart control GUI parameters 
And so that's pretty uh, cool and liberating as well when you're the one making the decisions and you're not just allowing the engineers to kind of make all these creative decisions for you. So let's bring it back in. Got the mixer, key command X. Quick uh, highlight, you have three mixers within the actual mixer window. If I hit Shift X, we're looking at the single track mixer, which highlights the current track that's in focus in the tracks area. All right, and then should probably also point out that the track that's highlighted here is also highlighted in the left channel strip inspector. So in other words, pop overheads is here in the tracks area, also in the channel strip inspector on the left-hand side, and also in the mixer. So these are all lined up. These are all the same track. All right, so if I highlight, for example, track number one, we can now see I'm using the single mixer to look at just that track. What else are we looking at? We're looking at the stereo output, what I would consider to be the master or the, 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 the sum of all of the tracks, right? And then after that, you have this really interesting master channel as well. And so this, I like to think of this like a glorified volume knob. I don't touch it. I don't even look at it, to be honest. So let's just kind of leave that where it is. If I want the stereo output to be on the track itself, I want to look at it. So perhaps I want to do some automation or something like that. Uh, then you want to go up to track, show output track, key command, shift, command M. So let's go ahead and get that in there. So then now, in effect, key command X, we're looking at the stereo out. And it's not only on the tracks area, but it's inside of the inspector and it's inside of the mixer as well. All right, so something else to be said, again, if I hit Shift X, we're now looking at the track. So it's not the single mixer anymore, it's almost like another mixer and it's called the single tracks mixer. And so here, we're looking at all the tracks that are inside of the tracks area. Finally, if I hit Shift X or if I just click on the Alt tab, now we get way more information, right? Um, if I had, let's see, here are the bus and sends that we're looking at as well. And not only that, we also get the click track, which is right here. I don't know, maybe you can't hear the, the click track. You want to raise up the volume or change the tone. And then there's a preview track. Now, what is this preview track? If this preview track is directly correlated to the loop browser. So if you ever hear something in the loop browser, you're actually listening to the preview track, which is seemingly in the background but it's not really because if again if i hit shift x and we're in the tracks area we don't see the preview track but it's it's kind of always there in the background right good all right good just tuning in eddie gray we're going over the logic manual we realize this is a time where we all kind of need to come together this is our way of contributing back to all the people out there um, that are going through the various things that they're going through we want you guys to win we believe in you we're pumped up. We remember what it was like to, to, to climb and to work every day. And, and so we just want to provide uh, the best content out there and the realest content where it's not contradictory, just the best stuff in the game today. So we're going over the logic manual. Um, we're not going to go over like piece by piece per se, um, but we will go over the details. Okay. So again, we've gone over the, the mixer to some extent. We uh, What's contained in the mixer, but all the the channel strips, or we talked about the output, the master as well. And there's a lot more info there we'll, we'll get into. All right. You're also going to find key command P, key command E, various editors, depending if we have audio or MIDI. So if I have MIDI selected, if I have the key command P like Paul, we're going to look at the piano roll. If I click on that, key command is E for audio. Now, again, within these editors there's different menus or sub menus inside so for example within the audio track editor we also have the audio file editor and then smart tempo editor and so that's information for another day but just be aware that sometimes you're going to have kind of menus or or windows underneath other windows same goes for the piano roll got piano roll the score editor key command n then we have the step sequencer which is not currently highlighted because I'm not using a pattern region. We'll get into that later. And then finally, smart tempo, but for MIDI or for MIDI events. Cool. 
Um, and this is where we perform all our various edits, quantizing, copy and paste. I mean, there, there's so much information here just in general. Today's just like an overview of everything. If you're a composer and you need to utilize the score editor, it's very vast as well. Uh, it's it's uh, there's so much information contained therein as well. So we'll see we'll see how much we can get done. All right. Probably one of the re the uh, the features that you're going to use the most is the loop browser, just because if you just need a quick like tambourine rather than grabbing a percussion or you know grabbing a, a salt and pepper shaker or something, you could just get something of very high quality inside of the loop browser without having to spend a lot of time actually trying to capture the idea. But also, it could just be a placeholder, right? You could just get something on paper and then improve it later on. So key command is O, and this is where we browse and search for loops. There's a lot of laws and kind of rules with the loops that we can go over as well. But again, MIDI loops, audio loops. So audio is in blue, MIDI is in green. And we also now have two new formats or newer formats, the drummer loops, which is really just the drummer technology, and then pattern loops or the pattern format which is really just midi as well all right so let's get started opening up a project so let me close this window all right so this is my desktop all right and i'm basically going to open up logic i'm gonna hit command n uh wait did i we can obviously go to the icon itself but let me give you something different perhaps that you don't know command spacebar Gives me the spotlight search. I'm going to type in logic. All right, so there it is right there. I'm going to hit return. Let that start up. Okay, so then for some of you, it's going to look different for everybody depending on how you have your settings set up. So I'm going to hit command N right now, and I get this window. So if you're not here, I'm going to show you how to get there um, when we get to the next menu. But um, I have various menus here, which I can select. The most obvious is, hey, I want to just start an empty project. You'll see that there's two offerings now. you got empty project. We also have live loops. So if you're learning live loops and we've got a phenomenal course over at HF Music Academy on live loops, then you might want to choose a live loops project. And all that's going to do is it's just going to show you the live loops format. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, let's go back here, empty project. And this is going to give us a new screen, new window, fresh, no features, no patches, no instruments, just a clean slate. And so here I can determine the tempo of the song. Let's say maybe you, you know you're going to play something in you know a faster tempo. So I'm going to click here and determine the tempo of the song. See, so then now I get a tempo of, hold on, 163. And so this is a good starting point to now compose or work on the song that I'm trying to work on. If you don't know, just leave it as is and you can figure it out as you go along. All right. Key signature is it's going to be in a major key and a minor key. Time signature, your input device. Are you going to record audio? And if you are, make sure that this is selected appropriately. Right, make sure your interface is selected. Uh, in this case, we're doing a, a, a live Zoom here. So I've got Zoom so that you guys can hear the information. Sample rate, what does this mean? Well, it has to do with fidelity. If you talk to most professionals, they're gonna say 48, 24 is the way to go. You'll also hear a really strong argument for uh, 44, 24. I'm gonna keep it at 48, 24. Frame rate, not applicable. We're not doing video at the moment and surround not applicable because I'm not doing surround right now. But basically, at this point, I'm going to choose. Now, there's other things to keep in mind in this window. You can look at all the recent projects you've been working on, starter grids. For those of you that are interested in really mastering live loops, this is a good place for you. Tutorials, again, a place where you can learn about the various features and logic demo projects. If you haven't heard this by uh, Billie Eilish and, and her bro, fantastic song. Project templates, so they offer templates so that you can kind of get started if you're not a mixing whiz, not a mastering genius yet, 
And this is some place where you can start. Are you writing hip hop? Are you writing electronic music? Are you writing songwriting? Look at that. They've determined tempos based on the various styles, like or orchestral is 120, whereas hip hop is 70. And then my templates. Once you get to the point where you start creating your own templates, then this is a place where you can find those. We're going to start with new project. Okay, selecting an audio track. Again, there's only three for you right now. Software instrument, audio, and drummer. I'm going to select audio, and then I'm turning on the preferences. So there's two things that we should talk about right up front. You've got your preferences and your project settings. Preferences has to do with your global settings. Project settings are going to be specific. So I'm going to go over to Logic Pro Preferences. Let me go ahead stand sheet this so we can look at it sweet i also want the project settings kind of side to side i'm going to go to file go to project settings general and then now i have both of the menus that you're going to need as you become a logic pro power user and if you have any questions we're going to be here pretty much every day uh time is to be dependent if you're interested in being notified go ahead and hit the notification bell and sub and we'll catch you guys on the on this next series of sessions that we're going to have and we're going to go deep all right no more excuses it's 2021 let's have some fun all right back into the manual which is right here all right cool and uh, let me do a quick sound check on something just give me one sec All right, cool. Yeah, I think I heard that. Sweet. All right, so getting started. Again, we talked about this menu, new from template. How do I get this? Well, again, if you're inside of Logic and you want to get the dialog window to ask you, hey, what do you want to do? We'll simply go to preferences, go to the general icon on the top left, okay? And then you go into project handling and then go into startup action. And this is where you want to ask. One second, guys, hold on. All right, cool. So now every single time you start Logic, it's in effect going to ask you what you want to do, just like it did for me earlier. Might say something like, do you want to open the most recent project? Would you like to select something from a template? So this gives you a lot of power and flexibility, so go ahead and do that. All right, so we can open existing projects, tutorials, we went through all this right here, okay? Let's, let's go over just some basic functionality. Playback, what do some of these buttons do up here if you've never really played with them? All right, um, you control the playback and the uh, navigation using the playhead, the ruler, and the transport button. So this vertical bar here is called, let me get rid of these uh, preferences. This is called a playhead, okay? Now, if you're wondering how I got it to be so thick, I basically went into uh, the, the menus and I changed them, but we're not gonna do that right now. Now, it's very important to use the period and comma key to be able to move this I don't want you to use your mouse all the time. This is not something that I want you to kind of lean into. It's good to use your mouse and your, or your trackpad, but sometimes you just want to kind of move swiftly. And we'll be using period and comma to move the play at sometimes. If you want to move it per eight bars, hold shift. And then now you have some flexibility here. Okay. And you can actually customize this to move per division, smaller amounts as well. Uh, something that I found to be really interesting is if I drag this, we can move it, right, as you would expect. But if I hold control, you can move the playhead per uh, finer controls. So I believe it's per division. So that's sweet as well. So that is how you work with playback, okay? So again, if I have a loop, you drag it in, we're going to hear it back, right? I, I hit space bar, we'll be able to hear it back. Um, and there's a lot more that you can do as well. So um, what else do you have? Well, we have the ruler as well. For example, if I have this selected 
and I hit command U, that's going to create a cycle region and this playback will now play repetitive, repetitively over and over and over again like this. Now, if you wanted to manipulate the, the size and change the, the length of the playhead or the region, all you have to do is hover over the bottom right of the region and you can go ahead and affect it like so. Okay. Something else that you can do is change the position and playback of the audio right up here. Now, this is all dependent and contingent on your snap to grid mode. And so we'll get into this a little bit later. But basically, if you're trying to be surgical and really precise, you're going to need to learn to snap to grid. So I'm hovering over, and you can see now I've got these predetermined limits, right? Like this is per division. I'm changing the size per division. And the same goes for the ruler. And not a lot of people know that, right? A lot of people are just eyeballing. Uh, and not to say that you can't. I mean, there's no rules here, but... If I could save you some time, if I could save you some money, if I could save you some, some frustration, I, I want to. All right. So snap to grid, you can change the length of the region and the ruler. You got the playback. We can move it with the trackpad. We can move it with period and comma. All right. Uh, let's see here. Top of the tracks area, the ruler shows the units of time. In musical time, which is bars, beats, divisions. Okay. Then you got the control bar at the very top. Here you have rewind, forward, excuse me, play, record. These are all things you can find in the control bar. Um, so we're going to start and stop playback. How do we do that? You press space bar, right? Pretty basic stuff. You want to pause. You, you uh, go ahead and hit space bar again. And that's different from stop, by the way. You can look into that. Uh, again, I'm just pausing, and then if I hit spacebar again, we're playing. In now, there's there's a lot more there. For example, if you want to change the behavior, if you go up to this play button up here, and you click and hold, you'll see that there's some more information here, right? I could do a lot more, and so these are this is exactly why I'm I'm showing up here because I believe that there's some information that's going to really help you. I don't know what it is. See, I just see my job as showing people the information and then watching them kind of grow like, you know, like trees or plants or something like just just like from a distance tripping out on, wow, this is what you've become as a result of the information. And I've taught a ton of people, guys. Um, all right. So we've talked about playback. Uh, you can also start playback by double clicking, which is something else I've seen some people do. So like if you want to double click on bar 13, I'm going to double click right now. You'll see that playback begins if I double click in the ruler. So we've got the tracks area here, right? And then if I hover my mouse right to the top of the tracks area, we now see a new icon. And so this is where the playhead moves. And then right above that, you see that we go back to the pointer tool, but we're in effect pointing or referring to the ruler, which again shows times in divisions and bars and beats. and um, you can change that as well, but we won't get into that now. But want to create a cycle region. How do I do that? Well, again, the easiest way is to highlight a region and then hit U or Command U. I highly recommend Command U. I'll get into that later. But what if you, I don't know, don't have a specific region that you want to highlight? And well, then again, if the if the snap to grid is set to bar, then I could just hover over where I'm interested in creating a cycle region and then just click and drag over to the right or to the left. And then that gives me that cycle region that I'm after. And there's a lot that you can do here as well, which a lot of people don't know about. Again, if I control click, there's a wealth of information here. So we can get into that later. Um, see, if you want to move the playhead, I talked about dragging it over. You can make uh, decisions right up here as well. If you wanted to move you know, maybe you want to go to bar 75 or something, double click, I'm going to hit 75, hit return, and then now the playhead is in effect. If you want to move the playhead in a fancy way, if you had forward slash, now we're using go to position. So if I hit 50, for example, now we're in effect 
at bar 50. So there's so many different ways that this program works. I'm just, just really excited to show you guys. Honestly, it's really, really, really cool. Um, let's see what else we got. Shift click in an empty part of the tracks area. So I'm going to move the playhead to bar 23 by shift clicking. So that's another way you can actually move the playhead, right? So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. I like that one right there. You can drag the playhead, click the lower part of the ruler to move the playhead, right? If you just click once, it's actually going to move it. I think most people do it this way. Um, let's see. Each time you click rewind or forward, I don't do it this way. I feel like this is a waste of time, but it's there. And then again, um, if you click, uh, yeah, that's good there. Okay, good. Um, let's see. What else we got? Move the playhead to the start of the project. Well, yeah, rather than having to, you know, zoom over and navigate over to bar one, all you got to do is hit return, move the playhead back to bar one. So good exercise is just hit forward slash bar 50 or what have you. You know, maybe use period and comma a couple times, hit return, just so you can start to learn how to navigate the playhead. Um, start using all these various features in your day-to-day -day workflow so that you can learn the habit, implement the habit. If you spend three hours a day on YouTube and watching various videos, it's not really going to matter so long as you really start to apply it. It has to become part of a habit. What I used to do when I first started, take some paper and just write down four key commands, just a couple of things that I never knew. Like, for example, inspector, key command I, and I just have it right next to me, right? Then I would look at it every single day, right? I'm still as committed as I was then now, and I just... And I'd learn something new because after 7, 18, 30 times of doing it, it just becomes a part of your flow. And then your bandwidth expands and you can learn and do a lot more. So we talked about the cycle region and how that works. That's pretty uh, basic stuff. There's a lot more in there. Um, something else that should be noted is let's say you do have a cycle region. We talked about lengthening it, right? But we didn't talk about moving it. Let's say you, in effect, want to move it over somewhere. If I hover over it, it turns into the hand tool, and then now I can drag that over. And again, this is subject to my snap to grid. So I've got, if I have snap to grid and I know how to work this, then now I've got full control over this feature. Not only that, but if I use the key command shift, command, period, and comma, now I can move the, the uh, cycle region really quick. This is another great tool as well. All right, so then let's close out here. We're getting started with Logic Pro. We can manipulate the tempo. So if I drag in a quick loop, uh, let's say this one right here. Let's listen to it. All right, good. And because it's an Apple loop, I want to change the overall uh, tempo and there's not really anything you have to do on top of that when we get into third party loops it's a different world so let's change this up i'm going to double click to change the numerical value and it's interesting if you look at the back it's 152.0002 so just be aware of that in case you know you're trying to line up a bunch of different loops you, you you need to make sure you know what the tempo is so here i'll type in 130 let's listen to that Good. If you wanted to change the sample rate for whatever reason, you can do that here as well. You can change the key, time signature, all of that is available in the LCD. Highly recommend you spend some time on the right hand side, drop down arrow menu, going over customize control bar and display. And that right there is going to give you so much more information. If you really want to learn this program, top to bottom, it's going to give you the views, which are on the left hand side. These Editors and Notepad and Apple Loops are on the right-hand side, all right? And then you have the transport controls, which are right here, which we've highlighted, right? Play or rewind. Then the LCD is right in the middle, and you can customize that to your liking. The only way you can do that is if you select custom, by the way, and there's various kind of preset menus that are made for you. But what I teach and how I consult companies is to do it all yourself, to understand how it works and why it works the way it does. Finally, we go into modes and functions, and this is right here on 
the not the far right, but just right in the middle. We've got replace, auto punch, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Set it up how you want to. You may want to take a screenshot here. But once you do, once you get it set up, I want you to save it as your default. So every single time you open up a new project, you basically apply that default, and it's there every single time. And so once you've played with tempo and you know how to change that and you change the key depending on your song. And by the way, some people don't even do this. They right, they have no training. And so they just, they're just making music. And that's fine too. But if you want to experience mastery, you got to have the knowledge, guys. Got to have the, 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 the experience to, to you know, get yourself to that next level. It's the only way. You can't just coincidentally land on something magical. Like it has to happen in, in a very intentional way. You might get lucky once, in other words. But at some point, you're going to have to be intentional about it. All right. Time signature. Um, again, I want you to customize it. So we're not, we're not going over any of this. Do they have some purposes? Yeah. Uh, for example, let's say you have a singer over and you go to time and you're like, you know, hey, when it says one minute, and, you know, this is where you want to come in. And so there's a lot of different workflows that could potentially help you. Like if I go to beats in time, right, it's going to look a little bit bigger. Um, but anyway, I usually keep it right here, and that seems to work for me pretty good. All right. So um, if you're recording with the microphone, a guitar, um, and, and you can record so much more, guys. If you guys want to sample from the Internet, you can do that, too. There's so many different workflows. But you're going to have to use an audio region. All right? When you add a track, you can choose a patch, as we talked about before. All right? Or... Um, you can use a loop. So it just depends on how you want to do it. So you got the metronome, which plays a steady beat to help keep you in time. If you see your graphics on your screen, and, and you know my screen may look a little bit different from yours, there's a reason for that. So all this animation stuff, it, it, it wastes power from your session, and I'm all about um, kind of keeping it as, as optimal and clean and as, as speedy as possible. And so what I did was I went to display here and in my preferences and I went to show animations and I took that off. Okay. So this is how you could do that if need be. Um, I'm just all about streamlining the workflow. Uh, if, you, if you're interested in uh, getting your system to operate in the best way possible, you might want to check out my course, How to Maximize Your Desktop and Laptop CPU Performance. It's free. It's got like over 40, 4,500 downloads or something at this point. So it's a good course to get yourself in the game. So you can select the audio. Now, again, a lot of this depends on your setup. So let's say you have your guitar and in input number one. Well, you don't see my inputs right now, right? And the reason that is is because if, you, if I go into my preferences, I don't have my input device selected, okay? So that's something that you have to watch out for when you're actually working is are my inputs and my outputs where they need to be so i'm going to turn on my inputs okay and i'm going to hit apply all right so then now when i create an audio track and i go through the same chain of events now we'll see the inputs based on my audio interface so it really just depends on what your setup is but if you're ever going through anything Maybe there's a couple of mistakes or something's not playing back. Look at your inputs and outputs, and I'm sure that you'll find the relevant information. As far as audio, unless you have like hardware or you're like a whiz, keep this on stereo output one and two, and that should work out quite nicely for you. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, let's do a couple more things here, and then we'll wrap it up. So... Next time that we get into it, we'll talk about recording and just, just doing something as basic as gain staging. How do I get the best level possible when it comes to my session? Now, what I recommend for you is before we get out of here, I want you to go into Logic Pro Preferences Advanced Tools. So that's on the far right. There's an icon, okay? And... I want you to enable everything except surround and the score editor, unless you're going to be using it. But what's going to happen here is if you haven't enabled all of this, it's going to turn 
your $200 program that you bought into a Lamborghini. So if you don't have all this on, it's going to basically function like GarageBand, and, and we're not looking for that. We're looking for the full experience. So again, preferences, advanced icon, looks like a, like a gear, and then enable these features, and I will see you guys on the next one. Thank you guys very much. I'm going to check my sound before I get out of here. Have a great day. Have a great week and a great 2021. Resources for the Modern Creative. Go ahead and share. Go ahead and sub. Much love, much respect. We'll see you later.